Good morning, Brent. Good morning, Natalie. Beginning tonight, two ramps along I-595 will be off limits. NBC Miami's Julia Bag has details on how the closures will affect your commute. Ag NBC, Davey. Good information, Julia. Well, jurors in the Casey Anthony murder trial will resume deliberations this morning in Orlando. They ended their first day without reaching a verdict. The sequestered jury of seven women and five men are trying to decide whether the 25-year-old mother killed her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee, back in 2008. Casey Anthony could face the death penalty if she is found guilty. A South Florida father heads to court today, hoping to convince a judge to grant him custody of his son, who the boy's mother abandoned over the weekend. The child is believed to be two or three years old. He has been in the care of the Department of Children and Family since Saturday when he was left with an intoxicated man. The mother, believed to be Glenda Robinson, hasn't been seen since. We'll be right back. Perhaps. Brent Solomon is live in the newsroom with the details. Good morning, Brent. Hi, Natalie. A fireworks fiasco igniting right at several homes right here in South Florida. People just trying to enjoy the festivities of the holiday suddenly finding themselves in harm's way. Just after nine last night, a middle-aged man airlifted to North Broward after a fireworks attempt went terribly wrong on the 10,000 block of Northwest 3rd Street in Coral Springs. When we arrived, our crews found a gentleman, a middle-aged gentleman that was struck in the face with, with a mortar, uh, which is a very large firework that is launched out of a tube that struck him in the face and he sustained very serious injuries to the face. It's not the only incident like it. Around the same time last night, investigators in Pembroke Pines getting a call of a 27-year-old man and injuring his fingers while trying to light fireworks here in the 15,000 block of Southwest 15th Street. The man taken to Memorial Regional after his explosive injury. Both men are expected to be fine. But take a look at this nightmare on 41st Street in Coral Springs. Someone trying to start fireworks that flew farther than expected. That bottle rocket went astray and flew into somebody's garage and started a, a fire in the garage. The damage to the garage is pretty significant and did cause a lot of damage. Fortunately, the fire was contained to this area and did not spread into that Coral Springs home. And then a pre-fourth celebration taking a turn for the worst. Eight-year-old Akira McIntyre injured when a firework discharged incorrectly. Someone tried using a cinder block to control it, but both exploded with shrapnel hitting her in the head. You know, even some of the fireworks that you can buy over the counter, but when they're launched out of the tube like that, they come out of the tube with a lot of force. So they can do a lot of damage. All right, Broward Sheriff Al Lamberti even speaking out about this series of unfortunate events. He says when it comes to fireworks, leave it to the professionals. Reporting live in the newsroom this morning, I'm Brent Solomon, NBC Miami. Brent Solomon joins us live in the newsroom with that and more making headlines this morning. Good morning, Brent. All right, Nat, here we go again. The lawyer for Tristane Bannon says they will file the suit today in Paris. It marks a dizzying turn of events just as the former IMF chief's fortunes seemed to be improving. He had been freed without bail after credibility questions arose about a maid who accuses him of rape at a New York hotel. Bannon says Strauss Kahn tried to rape her during a book interview in his apartment in 2002. Strauss Kahn calls Bannon's account, quote, imaginary and says he plans to file a criminal complaint of slander. One American is dead, confirmed dead, as Mexican rescuers scour the Gulf of California for seven missing U.S. tourists whose fishing boat capsized during a storm two days ago. Authorities say they are extending the search because the castaways could still be alive in the warm, calm waters. As of yesterday, 19 of the tourists and all 16 crew members were found after clinging to ice chests and life vests for more than 16 hours. Well, it is the final countdown. The clock start ticking today toward the NASA program's final launch. The crew of Atlantis arrived at the Kennedy Space Center yesterday, and NASA will start the official countdown of their clocks this afternoon at 1 p.m. The shuttle is set to lift off Friday on a 12-day mission to the International Space Station. 
The four-member crew will deliver spare parts and supplies, and of course, NBC Miami will carry live coverage of the last liftoff on Friday right now. It's set to blast off at 11.26 a.m. Natalie, this is going to be pretty exciting. Here. It is. I always love seeing the live coverage. It's so fun to watch. I've never had the pleasure of seeing it in person. No, no neither but have I. But I sometimes run outside the station to see if you can kind of see it in the yeah. air. And then, <laughs> hey, just run to Twitter.com and you can read all the updates. <laughs> Absolutely. Brent Solomon live in our newsroom. Thanks so much. Yep. Well, get in.